Shortly after that formation, there was a lot of fighting, constant conflict. The Arabic people were always restless. And then there was a tragedy that led to the to Baliso as a staging area for us. You know? And so that culminated with a separation of thousands of Garifuna people. Just imagine. We had Garifuna people on the main island of St. Vincent. We had several thousands on Bal uh, the island of Baliso. Just imagine the psychological what was going on in the heads of the people in Baliso. They were worried about their loved ones who did not make it to Baliso. A lot of people died. Okay? And then there was an example of Honduras. And then further that migration down the Atlantic coast to Nicaragua and the Caribbean coast to Belize. Um, so, and then when they got there, there was this marginalization, right? For example, um, one of the ironies in history is that when the Garifuna people got to Belize, they were sent to the most southern part of Belize, disconnected from the, the mainland in Belize city. But one of the ironies is that that was probably part of the strategic plan in that, you know, uh, that exile is what I think inspired uh, one of the reasons we're here today, you know, the preservation of our Garifuna culture. We were basically in a cocoon. We were in a bubble. So we were able to maintain our current structure of living, our Garifuna heritage, our songs, and so on. So, being in that cocoon, if you will, was, you know, um, in hindsight, uh, probably a divine plan for us. So, there are some people who survived, St. Vincent, who survived by the soul, uh, have carried a heavy burden. And I think that that burden uh, is reflected in the songs that we write. So, Songs have multiple purposes in our communities. You know, one is you know uh, news about a traumatic event. Like for example, when I was when I was about 11 years old, when I first got exposure to Palma Bar, there was a murder in Punta Gorda where I'm from, and murders in PG even now are extremely rare, and it's definitely the top of the town when something like that happens. And I remember Paul Nabor going house from house, house to house, you know, which is really what the original uh, source of Parana is basically telling news in those days. We did not have cell phones, we did not have telephones, you know, so how did you get to know what was going on in the community? You had Paranderos, you had, you know, people writing songs explaining what was going on, and somehow these messages would be transmitted from uh, community to community. You know, uh, within Belize, and then within Honduras, there are communities in Honduras and Guatemala. So there was a lot of traffic, if you will, between different uh, communities and carriers of these messages. So news certainly is uh, was one reason for for songs. Um, social control, uh, for example, if you were uh, Try, try to seduce somebody to get into their good, good graces, and the woman refused to have the guy write a song saying bad things about the woman, right? Like for example, this song, uh, So this woman is basically um, telling, telling the man that sh she will not pay him a cop because he cannot satisfy her fantasies and desires. <laughs> and so the man responds by saying, What do you give the man? We are there You told me you're a virgin. You told me you're a virgin, but everybody knows that you're the queen of this world. So, as an example of song lyrics, retribution, social control. Yeah, and then mourning as well, you know. Um, again, we come from a family, from a, from a culture where
tragedy seems to be a part of our existence. And so songs that reflect you know, um, uh, what we're worrying about are pretty common in the, the type of songs that get composed. And then also bringing our case or bringing a particular case to the community so the community judges, you know, whether or not, you know, um, the wrong that was done to you was actually something that, that you deserve. So you have Paranderos, uh, composers, writing songs about some injustice that they had to bear. And they would put the song out there so that the community could get to know what actually happened. What actually happened. You know, and for the community to actually make up its own mind. So there's this concept of talking to the community, talking to the group. Okay. And then a much more subtle rationale is articulating our existential core, our own cosmology, like for example in Dugu songs, you know, uh, even some Parana songs, like some of the songs that talk about compose, um, talking about our connection to Seiri, the fact that our ancestors are alive, that they are still, we still have contact with our ancestors. And I think that this existential war is one of the reasons the Arizona people survived after the exile from Baliso. I firmly believe that, just imagine, just imagine being around thousands of people who are killed, or who just died because they just gave up, or they did not have the kind of sustenance they needed to survive in Baliso. When the Garifuna people landed in Honduras, they were able to survive, and psychologically it seems like they were able to continue and live just as if nothing really happened. But I think that the fact that they intellectually were able to, to assert that the people that were killed in Baliso are actually Seri, and that they still have contact with them, I think gave Garifuna people the will to meaning the will to survive. The only similar thing that I am aware of in history is what the Jewish uh, uh, psychologist, uh, neuro, uh, neurosurgeon Victor Frankl talks about after he was interned in, a, in I think, at Auschwitz for several years. And he wrote this wonderful book called Man's Search for Meaning. And I remember being in Manhattan, New York, many years ago, reading this book in one of the upscale hotels in Manhattan, and I just was reading this book and I just started, uh, started to cry. Because it reminded me so much of what must have happened to our people back in Burundi. You know, Franco was able to articulate why he survived. He survived because he was able to say, you know, I have to survive for my grandchildren. I have to survive so that I can tell the story. I have to survive because I have yet another book that I want to write. And I, have, I, I, I need to survive also because the ones who have died, these Jewish people, that we were still connected uh, uh, to us, even though they passed on. So this existential core of our articulate of our cosmology, our connection to the internet is such an important part of why there are people, uh, why songs are so vital to there are people. So, you know, we talk a little bit of uh, Garifuna uh, music history, but I also want to talk about my own personal journey in Garifuna music and the transition to give up to maybe the singing a few songs. Um, in 1997, I made a very emotional trip to St. Vincent. Dr. Gill uh, you know, facilitated uh, that trip. And part of the trip was to go to San Diego, 
sometimes see in the northern part of St. Vincent where the uh, majority of people still live today. But the most emotional part was the trip to Balasso. I remember when I got there, there were only like two or three fishermen on the island. Dr. Gill is right, there's nothing goes there except, you know, there are a few boats. And I remember being extremely curious about visiting some of the resting bones of our ancestors. But I was too young enough, I was too young to tell the tour guide to just leave me alone for a couple of seconds. For some reason, he wanted to be uh, around us a lot. And I did not